I don't believe I can legitimately be accused of being a Denifrips fanboy, even though I might think that the Denifrips Aries 2 is the greatest thing since sliced bread. So let me lay out my case. I can't think of another DAC below a thousand pounds that has the blend of qualities that the Denifrips Aries 2 has. It has a natural-ish sound that's free of any digital nasties that you associate with DACs typically around this price. It also has very good resolving ability, the ability to pull off information from the recording itself. But perhaps its most remarkable quality is that it does all that whilst presenting a very 3D immersive soundstage. That's something that I typically tend to associate with R2R ladder DACs rather than Delta Sigma DACs. Then there's the Denifrips Pontus II that will set you back the best part of £2,000 in the UK. The build quality goes up substantially and the sound quality goes up substantially across the board. If you can justify the extra outlay and your system's resolving enough to highlight the difference between those two DACs, it's a no brainer. Just go for the Pontus II. It's a great sounding DAC. But now let's talk about Denifrips amplifiers. I reviewed the Hades preamp and the Thalo power amp. That'll set you back the best part of 3,000 pounds. And whilst I respect the fact that they do certain things exceptionally well, they have excellent clarity, grip and control. There's also certain things that they don't do so well. Analytical and dry sounding, they certainly have that. And for me personally, I don't find that so musically satisfying. Today, I'm looking at Denifrips Venus 2, the next DAC up in the range from the Pontus 2. And it isn't a given just because it's the more expensive model that I prefer the sound. That hasn't been the case with a certain favorite amplifier or favorite set of speakers that I've had. Amphion and exposure, please take a bow. Sometimes when manufacturers are trying to improve on an existing product and chase higher technical performance, they lose something musically. So the question is, with the Venus 2, have Denifrips thrown the baby out with the bathwater? The Denifrips Venus 2 occupies the same chassis as the Denifrips Pontus 2, the location of the buttons perhaps being the most obvious indication that the internals are quite different. It's a three quarter rack unit at 330 millimeters, that's 13 inches, and weighs in at 8.5 kilograms, 18.7 pounds. The button in the middle will take the Venus 2 out of standby. There are two buttons to toggle left and right between the various inputs and you can select positive and negative phase. Some systems benefit from being in negative phase, some recordings as well. But most of the time, you're likely to want to be in positive phase, and that's when the light's on. You can also switch between oversampling and non-oversampling mode, and the light is on to indicate it's in non-oversampling mode. I actually prefer it in oversampling mode, so I'll leave that light off. There's a mute button, and you'll see that the LEDs sequence through the various inputs, to indicate that it's actually been muted. And if you press it again, it'll go back and select the last input that you had in use. There's a mode button that allow you to configure the pin layout for the I2S input, and also to select between the two digital filters, which are sharp and slow. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. On the rear, you can see the XLR balanced and single-ended RCA analog inputs. You can't use both of them at the same time. And then the various digital inputs, there's a coaxial with an RCA connection, coaxial with a BNC connection, two AES EBU professional balance digital inputs, an optical TOSLINK, I squared S and a USB input. I've taken the cover off both DACs and here on the left you can see the Pontus 2 and on the right the Venus 2. I just want to illustrate some of the differences. So apologies, I'm going to have to move the camera around a bit. That's the main board on the Pontus 2. And what you can't see, because it's below that encapsulated in a metal case, is the power supply. So I'll post this picture up and you'll notice those two O-ring transformers, one's for the digital section and the other's for the analog section. And by keeping them completely separate, you don't have the power supply from one interfering with the other. And that's obviously in the pursuit of greater sound quality. It's a similar power supply that's on the Venus 2, but I do believe there are some enhancements to the power supply on the Venus 2. I haven't got confirmation of that, so I can't talk about it definitively. Back to the main board here, and if I can just draw your attention to the gap here, hopefully underneath that green PCB board, 
you can make out the metal casework for the power supply. Now if you compare that to the Venus 2, can you see this little metal ridge here? Well that's an extra sheet of metal that runs all the way along that board and that provides further isolation from the power supply. The other thing that's different are these cables which are connected here and I believe they're pure silver cables connected from the power supply to the main board. They don't exist on the Pontus 2 and that's again to improve the quality that you get from the power supply. Another big difference is the bank of capacitors. These white capacitors are EVOC MMK polyester film capacitors and they also have some Elna electrolytic capacitors. Over on the Pontus 2 you have a bank of electrolytic capacitors from a different brand and the reason they've used better quality capacitors on the Venus 2 is to lower the ESR, the equivalent series of resistance and that just basically improves the quality of the power that you get from the power supply. Back to the Pontus 2 and all those little rectangles that you can see, that's the resistor ladder network. And just take a note of roughly how many resistors there are there and compare that to the Venus 2. You'll notice there's an awful lot more, almost double. And what I think they do there is they basically sum the output from the resistors and take an average to improve resolution. The more resistors you have, the better resolution you can get. So that is a significant difference. And the other thing that's very different is these two devices here. These are the crystal oscillators. And in the Venus 2, you have these temperature compensated crystal oscillators, which basically have a little thermistor circuit in there. And as the temperature changes, it compensates for that to ensure the output from the oscillator, which feeds the clock, is as stable as possible. And over here, if I can make them out, you basically have just regular voltage controlled crystal oscillators. They're good quality femto crystal oscillators. It's what you see on many quality DACs, but not the same quality as what you see on the Venus 2. This is the main board on the Venus 2. And the only other thing that I want to point out is this board here that sticks up. That's the DSP board with the FPGA there, which deals with the DSP and presumably system control. And it's pretty similar as far as I can tell to the Pontus 2, almost identical. There might be some slight enhancements, but uh, nothing significant that I can make out. But overall, it's a very nicely laid out DAC. I'm going to do something slightly different here. I'm going to share with you my experiences of living with the Venus 2 over the last few months. Now that's something that I typically tend to do on my Patreon channel, but I think it's relevant to do here for a couple of reasons. The first is, it's been quite an interesting journey. And the second is that I've had the Pontus 2 here the whole time. In fact, it's been here for months previously. So I'm very familiar with the sound of that DAC. And I've been able to do extensive AB listening tests between two models fairly close together within a manufacturer's range. Now that's not something that you get to do all the time. So that's what I'm gonna focus my comments on. So let's start with the Pontus 2, which has been here for over a year. And for the first six months of that, I felt it just continued to get better and better. But I couldn't be 100% sure if it was a DAC that was improving or I was just getting conditioned to the sound until I had the opportunity to compare it to something else, which I did around four months ago when the Venus 2 arrived. And I did something that I don't ordinarily do. I hooked it up directly, immediately to my main system. Normally if a new product comes in and it hasn't been burnt in, it goes into a secondary system for about a month or so. But such was my enthusiasm, I just couldn't resist. And so quickly was it deflated. It sounded broken in comparison to the Pontus 2. The bass sounded thin, the mid-range sounded thin. There was a harshness in the upper mid-range. I thought, oh dear, what have they done here? And I sent an email to Alvin. I know that Denfrips products take their time to run in, that's their reputation. And I said to him, Alvin, I don't want to rush the review. I wanna give it its chance. I'm gonna give it a long burn in time. Are you happy with that? And he said, Taron, that's absolutely fine. So in it went into my son's playroom, where it's playing his current favorite, which is Horrid Henry at the moment. God, I hate that show. And whatever gaming favorites he has currently, which I think are Super Mario Football and Tennis, but at least there the Venus 2 was getting pretty much daily use. After a couple of months, I thought, 
That's it, that's enough. Time to get it back in your main system and start proper A-B listening tests. My impression at the time was, now I get it. I understand the Venus is technically superior. It has better clarity. But it's also missing a little bit of that harmonic richness that the Pontus II has. It's a bit like the debate that you could have between the Denifruits Pontus II and the Hollow Audio Spring III, two other DACs that I was able to fortunately test side by side. Your preference between those two DACs comes down to personal taste, whether you prefer the warmer, richer presentation of the Denifruits Pontus II or the slightly more resolving presentation of the Hollow Audio Spring 3. And if I'd done this review two months ago, that's exactly what I'd have found to be the case between the Venus 2 and the Pontus 2 as well. But I didn't do this review two months ago. I'm doing it now. And last week, I ran those comparison tests again between these two DACs, and the findings were different. The Pontus 2 is such a good DAC, the bass has weight, extension and definition. There's a richness to the mid-range whilst it gives up very little in terms of transient attack, I'm talking about the leading edges of notes. And the way in which notes fall away, the decays, they're beautiful. You have to have a black enough background for that to be the case. And it is the case with the Pontus 2. I find nothing to criticise in the top end extension and refinement, the soundstage width and the soundstage depth at all. It's all that you could ask for, for a £2,000 DAC. But the Venus 2 does everything just a little bit better. And after four months of use, it's giving up nothing in terms of harmonic richness as well. The Venus 2 is pretty much plug and play, but there are a couple of settings that are worth talking about. The first is oversampling versus non-oversampling. I prefer the sound with the oversampling on, has a little bit more clarity and resolution that way. And this isn't truly a non-oversampling DAC. The DSB board has a FIFO buffer and some digital filtering. So if you want a true R2R ladder non-oversampling DAC, this isn't the one for you. I don't particularly care about that because with this particular DAC, I prefer the sound with the oversampling on anyway. And the second thing is shifting between the slow and the sharp filter. I again prefer the sound as I did with the Pontus 2 with the slow filter on rather than the sharp filter. The sharp filter adds a little bit of glare, a little bit of harshness. So that's the settings that my comments relate to. To select between the two digital filters, you're gonna to need to mute the device first and then press the mode button and look for the optical light over here. With the light off, it's in sharp filter mode and with the light on, it's in slow filter mode. I actually prefer it with the slow filter, so I'm gonna leave that light on. I think it may be useful for me to share with you where I think it's appropriate to have something like the Venus 2 in your system and where it isn't. So let me share with you my experiences in that regard as well. The Exposure 2510 is still the best sub 2000 pound solid state amplifier that I've heard. And I've heard quite a few, let's be fair. The Wolsington R8 with upgraded PS vein tubes is the best tube amplifier that I've heard below 2000 pounds. A little ballsier than the exposure, but with perhaps slightly less refinement. The Amphion Argon Ones is not only the best speaker at 1200 pounds, it's one of the best speakers below 2000 pounds that I've heard with its clean dynamic presentation that remains musically involving at the same time. If you're looking for something in the near field, the Dali Minuet SEs at 1500 pounds are the finest mini monitors that I've come across since I started this channel. Whichever of those amplifiers I tried with either of those speakers, they all sounded great. And I think the choice for you too will come down to personal preference and use case scenario. AB testing the Pontus 2 and the Venus 2 in those systems, could I hear a difference? Absolutely. Would I justify the extra thousand pound outlay on the Venus 2 over the Pontus 2? Absolutely not. I'd upgrade the amplifier and speakers first. The Pontus 2 is good enough. So if the Venus 2 isn't perhaps appropriate in that setting, what setting is it appropriate in? Out comes my trusted old Exposure 21 Pre and 18 Super Monoblocks. Now you might not be able to buy these amplifiers, but you'll need an amplifier at a similar level of performance. I'm not gonna give you any prizes for guessing the speakers either, my Proact Response 1 SEs. Yes, you wouldn't be able to buy those either, but you should be looking for something modern of equivalent standard. As always, it all comes down to system matching and synergy. Let's face it, if you're gonna spend 3,000 pounds on a top-notch DAC, you're gonna wind up spending three to 5,000 pounds on a really good amplifier and a similar amount on speakers. If you do that and get that right, 
The differences between the Pontus II and the Venus II are no longer subtle. I'm not going to say that they're blatantly obvious, but they're noticeable. And the extra outlay, well, that becomes worthwhile. Denifrips have done it yet again with the Venus II. They've taken the already excellent Pontus II, which let's face it, is going to be good enough for 95% of the people out there, and improved it in every regard. Whilst these two DACs might be similar on the outside, they're not similar on the inside, and the improvements in technology show the Venus II has superior sound quality across the board. Yeah, this is an easy one. The Venus II doesn't put a foot wrong sonically as far as I'm concerned. It's as complete a sounding DAC at £3,000 as the Pontus II is at £2,000. All I can say is, if you're in the market for a DAC around this price and you overlook it, well, I hope that FOMO, that fear of missing out, doesn't keep you awake at night. It would in my case. The Denifrips Venus II gets an outstanding from this channel. I said at the beginning of this video, sometimes when manufacturers are chasing greater technical performance, they can lose something musically. Throwing out the baby with the bathwater, I think, is the way that I put it. And that means that when you're spending more money and upgrading, it can lead to musical satisfaction, but sometimes it may not. And it's about those stories that I'd like to hear in the comments section. I'd like to hear about your upgrade successes and the ones that didn't work out quite so well. All that remains for me to say is if you haven't done so already and you like what I'm doing with this channel, please do all that social media stuff. Check me out on Patreon for consultancy services, bonus content, join the ABA club. But for today, for now, the British Audiophile, signing off. <laughs>